Well, hello there. Paul here, and I'm just backing up some files on my computer. I'm reporting to you from my apartment today because we're bringing you Newegg TV's first ever software review. What software are we reviewing? Well, that would be none other than soon to be released Windows 7. We have a release to market version here. I'm gonna walk you through the installation process and then I'm gonna go over some of the awesome new features that Windows 7 brings to the table. And Guinness is gonna help. Aren't you guinea pig? Aren't you guinea pig? Now, if you're installing an operating system from scratch, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is back up your old data. For this, it is highly recommended to use an external hard drive. If you have an old hard drive, you can get an enclosure like this one, put the hard drive in it, and then you have an external unit where you can back up all your data. After you've got all your data backed up, you wanna shut down your computer and get ready to get into the BIOS. BIOS stands for Basic Input Output System, and you probably recognize it as the jumble of letters and stuff that pop up when you first power your computer on. Getting into it is probably the most intimidating part of this process for a new user, but really it's not all that difficult. First thing you want to do is turn your computer on, and when you see the splash screen and everything start to pop up, you'll want to start to hit the delete button. Usually it will indicate at the bottom of the screen which button to push to get in. Usually it's delete, possibly F8, or I've also seen F2. You also want to have your monitor on. Now the reason we're getting into the BIOS is to tell the computer where to boot from. Usually when you power the computer on, it will access your hard drive, or one like this one and it will load the operating system off of it. Since we're installing the new operating system off of the DVD that comes with Windows 7, we will want to tell the computer to boot directly off of the disk. You're looking for boot priority. This is usually in the first couple menu items. In this instance, we have first, second, and third boot device, and our first boot device is currently set to hard disk. So we wanna set the first boot device, that's gonna be the first place the computer looks, to CD-ROM, and we hit F10 to save and exit. Now, of course, we want to make sure that our DVD is in the DVD drive, and the next time the computer boots, it should access the DVD-ROM drive and boot off of the disk. After booting off the DVD, it will go into this installation mode. Here we're faced with the option of whether we want to upgrade or do a custom fresh install. I always prefer the fresh install just because if you upgrade, you might not always get the best performance. We select the drive we want to load the operating system onto here. At this point, be very, very certain that you have all of your data backed up. There's nothing you need off of your old hard drive. And also make sure you're selecting the correct hard drive to install onto because everything on that drive will be erased. After you select the drive, it starts to copy files. And here's where you can take a short break because your computer will be working for at least a few minutes to copy all the files off of the disk and onto your hard drive. Well, it's only been about 10, maybe 15 minutes, and we're already almost done with the installation. We've had one restart so far, and we are on the completing installation step. And there you have it. Windows 7 is now installed on my computer. It only took about 25 minutes from the time when I loaded off of the DVD, and I'm happy to say that the sound is already working, and the graphics drivers just out of the box are pretty decent. I'm going to go ahead and download all of the drivers and everything for my hardware, and I'm also going to install some screen capture software, and then we'll go ahead and start looking at some of the features of Windows 7. One of the first things you notice when installing Windows 7 is the out-of-the-box compatibility. That includes a lot of network drivers for a lot of different network cards, so immediately you can connect to the internet so you can download your drivers for your other hardware. Also, speed-wise, Windows 7 is faster than Vista, noticeably, if you're upgrading from the same system. And according to a lot of online reports so far, it is actually faster than Windows XP as well. The initial install size was 16 gigabytes, and the install time was about 25 minutes from the time I booted off of the DVD. Next, we're going to look at user account control. This is one of those touch points from Windows Vista that a lot of people didn't like. User account control is the little pop-ups that you see every time you install a program. They are still there, but you can easily access the control settings. So if you're comfortable, you can set it to a lower level, and then you won't see those pop-ups nearly as often. Next, we'll take a look at the Windows taskbar, which has been pretty much completely redesigned. The first thing you'll notice is the quick launch has now become your entire application bar. Whenever you launch an application, it appears as a large icon here. You can pin applications so that they'll appear here all the time, or you can just launch programs from the start menu, such as sticky notes, and then they will appear as a new taskbar icon. 
Also, if you have multiple instances of a program open, such as multiple Internet Explorer windows, mousing over the taskbar will show you icons that pop up. These are actually live icons. If they have video playing or anything like that, it will show. And by mousing over each one, you get a preview of what's shown on each window. You can also close the windows directly from here. Also with the taskbar, you have jump lists and I'm just going to use Explorer here to show how a jump list works. We're on Newegg.com and I'm going to drag it down on top of Explorer. It's now been pinned to the jump list, so after closing Internet Explorer, if I want to go back and go immediately to Newegg.com, it's now pinned here, and I can use that program to open that file. Next, we'll take a look at Windows Explorer and the new feature, which is called Libraries. Libraries is a really cool new feature that lets you take folders and items that are scattered across maybe multiple hard drives or even multiple computers and include them all in the same location. So a library actually includes a map of different locations on your computer. You add folders to the library, and then when you look at that library, you'll see those files and you'll be able to access them and play them or whatever else you want to do with them. But at the same time, they're not actually being copied over and taking up more space on your hard drive. And finally, probably my favorite part about Windows 7 is that you have all of the personalization and visual options that were available with Windows Vista. There are really just a ton of different arrow themes that really allow you to give your computer a personal touch. And there's a lot more of these available online and you can also create them yourself. A few other features that we didn't highlight in the video are Windows Touch, which provides out-of-the-box compatibility with touchscreen and tablet PCs. Media Player is much improved and now supports media streaming, so you can take your home audio or video collection and stream it to a remote computer. Networking is much improved, provided you have Windows 7 installed on the different computers on your network. You can easily use Home Group to share resources between them. Also, I think Microsoft did the right thing with the versions of Windows this time around. Windows 7 Home is appropriate for the vast majority of home users. Windows 7 Professional includes domain support and is appropriate for a work environment. And Windows 7 Ultimate includes all that as well as a few extra bells and whistles such as Windows XP compatibility mode. I can wholeheartedly recommend Windows 7 for anyone who's looking for a new and improved operating system experience. And remember, the release date is October 22nd. Thank you very much for watching today's video, everyone, and we'll see you next time on Newegg TV.